Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Eberhardt and I'm on Tethered's uh, staff. And give you a little brief bio of myself. Uh, I've been hunting out of a saddle probably longer than anybody else in the country. Uh, started hunting out of a saddle exclusively when I'm hunting out of trees in 1981. So I've hunted 40 seasons out of a saddle and I've taken uh, 50 bucks that uh, qualify for the record book plus a lot of other a lot of other smaller bucks two and a half and three and a half year olds and a lot of does and stuff um, so I've been doing this a long long time I helped trophy line design their ambush saddle I was con under contract with them actually uh, had a little bit to do with new tribe and a couple of saddles uh, they came out with but they were all single panel saddles and I'm not a big fan of single panel saddles and obviously tethered has the mantis uh, Phantom and this year the Menace which is their new price point awesome saddles uh, but I'm a two panel guy you know two panels you just have a lot more versatility and um, it's just something that I like better I like being able to adjust everything whenever I want and whatever the hunting situation qualifies for so I'm gonna kind of show you what what I have tethered it's sold under tethered it's called Eberhardt signature saddle uh, they kind of wanted me to be on their team because I've been doing this for so many dang years and I've written several books. I've got a chapter in each one of my books on saddle hunting. Um, so I, I Greg, Greg Godfrey actually nicknamed me the godfather of saddle hunting and he's one of the owners of uh, Tethered. But uh, anyway, this is the box it comes in. It says Eberhardt Signature Saddle. They're designing a new box. It's going to come... Uh, it's going to come as a saddle by itself. It's also going to come as a kit. And when it comes in the kit, it's going to come with a 11 millimeter, it's called a lineman rope, which is basically your safety rope. It has a carabiner on each end. Well, it has a carabiner on the loop end. And then it's also got another carabiner on a Prusik knot, which is basically you hook this to your lineman loop on one side, throw it around the tree. You adjust this rope as you climb, descend, and uh, ascend and descend the tree. And then it will also come with an 11 millimeter tree tether. Now the tree tether also comes with a Prusik knot with the carabiner. And I've taken that Prusik knot off and I've actually bought one of the rope mans from tether. So the rope man is just a lot quicker adjust. With the rope man you can adjust it instantly. With the tree, with the Prusik knot, you physically, once you put your weight in it, it kind of binds on the rope, the knot binds on the rope. Anytime you got fabric to fabric, it binds. Um, so it binds on the rope. So to adjust it, you actually have to fidget with it for a couple seconds to slide it up and down the rope to adjust your, to adjust your drape. And to me, that takes too long. It still works, but you just, it just takes a little bit longer to do that stuff. So anyway, when you buy the kit, it comes with both the tree tether as well as the lineman rope with all the carabiners and the Prusik knots. And then the saddle itself is quite unique. There's no other saddle on the market like this that I'm aware of, I should say. Uh, and this is basically a modified version of what I've been hunting out of for 40 years. Uh, and again, I've helped design several single panel saddles, uh, hunted out of them a few times, just don't care for them. I just don't care for a seat being the seat. With the single panel saddle, once you buy the seat, it is the depth it is. You can adjust it, and I like to adjust my seat. So this is a two panel saddle. It has an adjustable bridge. This right here is the bridge. That's called the bridge. Now I have mine adjusted to 16 inches. So it's 16 inches from D ring to D ring, and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Once you find your sweet spot on your bridge length, you pretty much leave it in that spot. So my, my sweet spot is 16 inches. It also comes with leg straps, and these are strictly for safety, safety purposes. And these leg straps come off the inside panel, and they come up here, and they are actually connected to these little leg loops, which are attached to each one of these aluminum D-rings. So those, once you put them on, once you get in your saddle at the base of the tree to climb up the tree, those pull up between your legs and hook onto one on each side, 
and they remain loose all the time. You never tighten those. You never want them to put any pressure on your inner thigh or your femur artery. Those hang loose. Those are just safety features. Probably the biggest deal with this two-panel saddle over any other two-panel saddle, and there are other two-panel saddles out there, are these aluminum D-rings. Just like I mentioned with the Prusik knot binding on the rope, when you put pressure on it, when you put your weight in it, anytime you have fabric or a rope bridge and you have fabric bridge loops, which are basically very similar to these lineman loops, fabric lineman loops, as soon as you put your weight in the seat, the fabric or the rope on the bridge binds to that fabric bridge loop. So when you adjust your seat, you have to manually adjust your bridge on your bridge loops to cup to have the saddle cup up underneath your butt. With this one, it just automatically slides into place. I don't care how much weight you put on this thing, as soon as you adjust these panels to whatever depth of seat you want, uh, it automatically slides into the correct position to uh, center your weight distribution in the saddle. And again, it has two paddle, two two panels. Each panel is six inches wide. Each panel has cross braces. You have an inner panel and you have an outer panel. The outer panel is the panel that has the bridge or the lineman loops on it. And it also has the mollies on it that you can attach pouches to. And the outer panel, on the inside of the outer panel, it also has your weight bearing waist belt. And it has an adjustment buckle, that, a quick attach uh, adjustment buckle for adjusting that. So with the two panel, what's really unique about pretty much all two panel saddles actually, one thing that is common among them is your inner panel always stays under your butt. And that's a big, big deal. Because when you're hunting in a, at least all of the saddles I've hunted from, the Phantom is probably the only exception. Uh, when you adjust how, how you're sitting, in a single panel saddle or when you fidget it tends to climb up they tend to climb up into your lower back and because it's a one-piece unit when it climbs up in your back obviously it's pulling the bottom of the saddle up from your underneath your butt so you're constantly probably every five to ten minutes lifting your weight up and pulling it back under your butt and that really gets to be a pain and it's not that comfortable that's why you see a lot of saddles with these little side adjusters, single panel saddles, they have these little side adjusters to try and keep that saddle, the bottom of that saddle, cupped under your butt so it doesn't climb. Well, with a two panel saddle, you never have to worry about that because this panel stays under your butt all the time and the outer panel is the only one you adjust. So when I'm hunting, I typically like to have panels pretty much overlapped, maybe about these are six inch wide panels. I like to have it about nine inches. Uh, sometimes I'll like even totally overlap them and have them six inches. But you can make them 12 inches. You can have them just touching each other. Um, you can have them, you can have the outer panel halfway up your back if you want to take a nap in the morning, which I do a lot. If I get in the tree way before daylight, I'll go to sleep. I'll just raise the outer panel up into my lower back and, you know, roll my arms underneath the tree tether and lay on the tree tether and, and fall asleep because I got a lot of back support and plus the inner panel is under my butt. Once I wake up to, go, to actually physically hunt, I'll pull my weight forward and I'll take that outer panel and I'll slide it down over top of my inner panel to however deep I want that seat. Another cool thing about a two panel saddle, especially for new guys, this is really important. If you're a new hunter into saddle hunting, you're usually going to want the seat to be a little bit deep because it makes you feel more comfortable because you've never sat in a saddle before in a hunting situation. So, you know, when you let go of the rope and you're facing the tree and you've got all that weight on your rope, you know, you, you want a saddle that's going to cup your entire butt probably up to your waist. So you're going to want a 12 or maybe a 14 inch deep saddle when you first start hunting. The more you hunt, the more you're going to find out the higher you have the top of your saddle, whether it be the outer panel on a two panel 
or the top, the top of a single panel saddle, the higher that goes up into your waist, the more it cuts down on your waist mobility to twist and shoot behind you or just to spin around at the waist. It kind of locks your upper body to your lower body if that gets up too high. So that's a big deal. So as a new user, you want, you typically are gonna want a saddle that's gonna come up to where a belt would be on a pair of pants. You're gonna want that seat a little deeper. But the more you hunt out of it, you're gonna find you wanna shallow that seat up to have that upper body mobility to be able to spin. And basically all you need, the only thing really that's holding your weight is what's underneath the butt. So by shallowing up that seat, it gives you a lot more versatility to swing around, change your clothes while you're in the saddle. Cause you know, you can untuck your clothes and put on layers or take layers off, put them in your pack, tuck everything back in and tighten your belt back up. You can just do a lot more stuff with a two panel saddle. And they're a lot more comfortable. Consider this, when you have when you have a single panel saddle, what you have is you have a strap at the top of the of single panel, and you have a strap, two inch strap at the bottom of the single panel, and usually you've got some form of mesh or fabric in the middle. So basically your only two weight bearing straps are at the top, which you really can't feel that much, and at the bottom, which is the one that's right underneath the cheeks of your butt. So that's carrying the majority of the weight of the saddle. With a two panel, if you so desire, you can have these panels so they're just touching each other like that. So you've got eight inches of strap. Basically there's four two inch wide straps cupping your butt. So you got a lot of solid weight bearing load strap. And that makes it a lot more comfortable. So it's really easy to sit for long, long periods of time. It, and it's, <laughs> It's just really, really, really comfortable. And with this, another thing is with this type of a two panel saddle or any two panel saddle for that matter, whether it has fabric over the straps or not, they're comfortable because all two panel saddles are designed to have two two inch straps on the inner panel and two two inch straps on the outer panel. So when you pull those panels down under your butt, now I'm actually using this one as though it's, there's ba I've got two of them overlapped, so basically I've got a two inch, a two inch, and a two inch. I got six inches of strapping supporting my butt. But a lot of guys, when they're in two panels, they like to have them where you've got them a little bit separated. So you've got four two inch straps supporting your butt. That's eight inches of solid strapping supporting your butt. And that strapping is a lot more comfortable than a single panel saddle because on a single panel saddle, you've got a single two inch strap under the cheeks of your butt and you've got a two inch strap up at the top of the saddle. Everything else in between, it's just a piece of fabric. So you've only got two major support straps. And the one on the bottom of your butt in the crease of your butt is doing most of the supporting. Whereas with a two panel saddle, you're gonna have at least four inches here because you got two two inch straps on the inner panel. So even if you had your outer panel way up here into your back, you're still gonna have four inches of support under your butt instead of two. So it's just a lot more comfortable. Also with a two panel, if you do have hip pinch, you can actually separate the panels to where one panel's coming down under your butt and the other panel's up a little higher and there's a gap right here at your hip bone. But you can make that gap at your hip bone so it's not pinching your hips. Um, what else have we got? Another unique thing about these D-rings is they have these slots underneath the D-rings and that's where the actual saddle panels are connected because it's one continuous seat, it's one continuous strap. So when you are adjusting these, you can make, you know, you can make the inner panel shorter than the outer panel. Because if the outer panel is going to be up, up your back a little bit, you're going to need more of it as opposed to right here underneath your butt. So because these panels slide in this slot under this D-ring, you can make one panel longer than the other or vice versa. Uh, now all all saddles have lineman loops. A lineman loops a lineman loop. Uh, that's just there, you know, to put your lineman rope on when you're climbing and 
descending trees. Uh, another unique thing about this two-panel saddle over all other two-panel saddles, all the other two-panel saddles have some form of fabric or mesh over top of the panels. Basically, these are covered. These are covered in some sort of a fabric. I don't understand that at all. We actually, when I say we, Ernie and I, when we were working on designing this, um, it, even though it's close to what I've used for 40 years, our original one had a mesh panel over top of the actual fat over top of these straps. I tried it, I hated it. I didn't like it at all, and you wanna know why? Very simple reason. When you have fabric over top of your panels, and you've got your weight in them, when you want to reach down and adjust your panels, with, with the fabric over top of the panel, you physically have to take your thumb and your index finger and reach inside of the panel and pinch, pinch that fabric to pull that up, or you have to reach under your butt or wherever the bottom of that outer panel is and pinch that to pull it down. With this style, with this open open strapping like this, all you've got to do is reach back underneath, stick your index finger underneath that outer, outer strap, and just lift it up. It's so much faster. You just reach under it to slide that up, or if you want to take it down, you just take your thumb, put it underneath the bottom, put it over top of the bottom strap, and just push it and lift your weight up a little bit and slide it down. And one cool thing about an ESS versus other two panel saddles, other two panel saddles have, have some form of fabric over top of the strapping on each panel. We did that at first, I hated it. I didn't like it at all. I built a ESS for functionality and for killing and comfort. It has nothing to do with cosmetics. I could care less about what a deer thinks about what this thing looks like or people. It's about killing stuff. So the function of not putting fabric over top of my panels is this. When I reach up, I'll kind of slide over here so you can see it. I can slide my finger underneath the strap on the outer panel. And the outer panel has those molly loops on it and it has the lineman loops on it. So I can easily tell which one is the outer panel. And I can stick my finger underneath that and easily slide it up. If you have fabric over those straps, you have to physically pinch that and pull it up. And it's not as easy and it's not as fast. So when you can just stick your finger under it and do it, it's a lot faster. So when I'm sitting, you know, and I'm gonna go to sleep for a while, I will actually adjust my panels apart so that I have a really deep seat and I got a lot of back support up above my waist. I would never hunt like that because I need the waist mobility. But then I would wrap my arms around the lead. So once in a while when you're sleeping, you do the herky-jerky thing and you go like that. Uh, so when you do that, this will make sure you don't go off to the side. So I, let, I wrap my arms around that and then I just lay my head forward on this. And sometimes I'll bring a little pad wrap around this and I'll just fall asleep until it cracks through daylight. Once it gets daylight, same exact deal. Because this saddle, the panels are totally exposed, the straps, you just reach out with your thumb, grab that, and pull it down where you want it. Uh, so it's much, much easier to adjust. And I did see another saddle that kind of blew me away. And it had, it had the fabric over top of the panels, just like the other ones I'm talking about. But it actually had three connector straps that were about that long and each one of them had a buckle in it that connected the two panels that I totally don't get <laughs> because basically I, I I sat in one of those I actually had I actually had somebody show me one of those and you have to have those straps adjusted the same so if you want to adjust anything you got to keep in mind you got to adjust all three of those straps the same that's pretty hard to do when you're hunting and, but the biggest reason to me was if you take and you over, let's say the panels were still six inches wide, just like this one is. If you take and you want to overlap your panels, you had to, you had to lengthen those straps out six inches each. So each strap had to be six inches so you could fold the outer panel 
underneath the inner panel. And then as soon as you did that, now you've got a buckle underneath your butt. You got three buckles underneath your butt and you can feel them when you sit in it. So that thing is not designed for totally overlapping the panels because you can feel those, those uh, buckles through, through the actual saddle itself. Now I will say this, when the buck, anytime the straps were, the, or the panels were outside of each other, as long as it was farther out than the width of the buckle, which was probably an inch and a half, it was comfortable. So as long as you kept that seat, see you'd have six inches, six inches plus an inch and a half, so you'd have, as long as you kept it 13 and a half, 14 inches wide or deep, you were okay and you couldn't feel the buckles. But as soon as you shallowed it up any shallower than that, you could feel those buckles underneath your butt. So everything on this ESS, that's what we call it, it's the Eberhardt Signature Saddle, ESS for short. Everything on this thing has a function. The D-rings have a very, a very strong function and purpose in my opinion because they self-adjust with the bridge. Uh, the panel's not being covered. That's for a very specific reason. It's much, much easier to adjust. Uh, I would never ever consider putting connector straps between the two panels, because to me that's totally ridiculous. Um, also have, you know, waist belts just like every other waist belt. Lineman loops are lineman loops. All saddles have those. Leg straps are leg straps. All saddles have those. Um, so, you know, it, it, has all, it has all of the features. It's passed all the 300 pound TMA drop tests. So uh, that's that's another thing you got to think about for you know safety safety purposes because a lot of times all this fabric and stuff it's going to be weight bearing enough you know these straps are three or four thousand pound test and a lot of this stuff is way overloaded as far as the weight of the actual material and fabric but that doesn't mean it's stitched properly the stitching in this thing is what holds your life so for all you guys that have had boats and had you know you go go to a mass merchant, you buy an inexpensive boat cover, put it on your boat for three or four summers and the thread rots away because it's out in the weather. Well, you're hunting in the weather. Uh, you know, so stitching makes a big difference. So all that little minor stuff that Tethered definitely watches and takes care of and thinks about for, for long-term use, some companies may not. So it's pretty important to know when you're buying something that it's passed all the safety tests. Um, and liability insurance is, costs a lot of money. Make sure if you are buying a saddle from somebody that, that they do have liability insurance just in case you do get hurt. Uh, liability insurance probably adds another $10 cost to every single saddle, and Tethered has that. So I consider this to be the Cadillac of all saddles, and again, nobody. There isn't anybody on the face of the earth that has taken more book bucks out of a saddle than I have. And I don't think there's anybody else that's hunted 40 years out of a saddle like I have. So, uh, you know, I've tried them all. I've tried the rest and this is the best. Um, it is a two panel. So two panels do take a little bit more to get used to. I will admit that because it's two panels, it takes 10 more minutes to get comfortable with, but 10 minutes is not that big a deal. Um, but the versatility, the comfort, adjustability, the added upper body mobility when you shallow the seat up, the sliding on the D ring, the bridge strap, self, self adjust, you never have to worry about the saddle climbing up. Uh, those are all those are all pretty dang big deals. Keep that in mind. This is going to be in some retail stores this fall. <laughs> Michigan, Michigan, and Ohio. I shouldn't even say that. Uh, cost on this saddle is going to be 189, 199, someplace in there, just for the saddle itself. And as a kit, it's going to be around 300. dollars That's with both tree tether, lineman rope, and the carabiners. Uh, and keep this in mind, when you buy one saddle, that's what you're going to hunt out of for the rest of your life. Up until this, you know, because this has some features on it that mine, my old modified one does not have, safety features. But I've used the same saddle since 1981. So I used that for 38 seasons. 
and I could still use it now. I mean, it's perfectly fine. So, you know, what do you think of the idea of being able to hunt damn near any tree? Because you can get in just about any tree with a saddle. I don't care if it's crooked, I don't care how big it is, I don't care how small it is. Uh, you can get in just about any dang tree and you can prep a hundred trees if you want. Because your saddle is going to be with you all the time. You don't have to have a stand for every tree. You can prep as many trees as you want on private property, public land, or whatever. And you can go to any one of them at any time and hunt them. So you have a lot more opportunities of trees to hunt. You don't have to have a stand for every tree. You can shoot 360 around every tree. The, the list goes on and on and on about the advantages of saddle hunting. So I, I, not anything to do with ESS, but just saddle hunting in general gives you far more advantages than any conventional type of stand would ever give you. So uh, give it a shot. Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.